Hey guys, I'm Zeebs, I'm the founder of DNC Media. About a week ago, we made a quick webinar on kind of the current state of digital marketing just to help some local brands and businesses that I work with kind of figure out what to do moving forward, how they should be thinking. Great video, by the way. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, from that, we got a lot of questions that kind of spurred up from some of the clients we work with in the travel and tourism world, so we wanted to do one kind of dedicated to that niche. I brought my very good friend, Mr. Scott Eddy, to help me today. Scott has worked with some of the largest brands in the world, both on the advisor side, as well as on the front line with different influencer campaigns. He's the host of a new travel show on Lifetime TV. Um, on top of that, and what a lot of people probably don't know is, he actually started and built the largest and first digital agency in Southeast Asia. So from that, I mean, you've worked with the largest brands in the world, you have international yeah. marketing experience. I mean, living overseas for 17 years in six different countries, it's after I had the agency, I sold it uh, after being the biggest in the region for five years and built up my personal brand. And now, you know, I'm back in the States. Uh, I got here about four years ago, but I travel full time and I work with these brands full time on the front end and on the backside, um, you know, building out these strategies and really executing these strategies all over the world. Perfect. So this video, I mean, a lot's changed in the last couple of weeks and months. Um, this is something that no one really was uh, planning for or prepared for. Mm. None of us have really gone through a national pandemic in our, or global pandemic, excuse me, in our lifetimes. I haven't been traveling, I'm dying. Scott is <laughs> losing his mind. We have to stay six feet apart. Don't come near me, Scott. <laughs> and uh, you know, we have some notes written on the board back there. So if you see us glancing from time to time, that's it. We just have a lot we wanna cover. Um, I think the biggest thing that people are wondering is, is travel gonna come back? And I mean, travel will come back and it will come back fierce. Will it happen overnight? Absolutely not. But travel, I mean, the hospitality world as a whole, it's a $9 trillion business. We account for 10, 11% of the global GDP. It affects one in 10 jobs. I, I mean, it's gonna come back in a very big way. So if you're a PR director, a marketing director, a sales director who works in the tourism industry, this video is really meant for you. Um, like I said, we're just gonna go through some of the things we've seen, some of the strategies we're working with clients now and different ways that you can even implement stuff on your own should you choose to. Our goal is to educate. We love to travel. We love this industry more than anything, the people that we work with. And uh, our goal is, you know, everyone really has to come together during these times because that's the only way I see things moving forward, truthfully. So, Scott, I mean, where are some of the clients that you're working with now? Where are they at? Well, if I had to guess, the majority of the people watching this, um, you, you didn't focus on digital, okay? You, you didn't have the proper systems in place. You probably, if you're a hotel, relied heavily on OTAs. Uh, right now, you're probably not in a good spot. You're backed into a corner because they basically held you hostage. They controlled the data, they controlled the traffic. And now, like, what are you doing? Right, I mean, a lot of people are having to shift very drastically overnight yeah. to be digital. And digital's confusing if you haven't been doing a lot in that world. Correct. On top of that right now, there's like 10 times the amount of noise because yeah. people are losing their jobs, they have more times, so whatever it is, everyone needs business. So, you know, you're seeing a lot more videos even just like this, people putting out information where these people aren't actually experts or anything and they're right. saying oh i'm a guru trust me hire me pay me do this right and there's a lot of false information out there which kills us which is why we had to do this today so we're going to get to kind of the answers on on what we think you should be doing moving forward first i kind of wanted to break down just the simple funnel that most tourism companies are using and this is a very basic funnels can get complex right but at the core of everything this is how it all works you're essentially trying to take traffic from two different sources, right? You have organic. And this is primarily targeted towards hotels, this area. And then you have paid, right? Your organic traffic is, you know, people find you on Instagram through hashtags, a friend tells you about you. They're finding you organically, maybe it was through search. Paid, you're actually putting money behind something to get in front of these people. So it could be Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. It could be a paid influencer campaign, sponsored blog posts, et cetera. The whole purpose of both of these though, is to drive traffic to essentially a landing page, your website. Usually on there, you have a great video because if you're not using video, that's a story for another day. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go over it today, but <laughs> you're making a big mistake. From that landing page, you generate leads and that turns into a client, right? So I get asked a lot 
what the most important aspect of this is, right? Is it getting the traffic? Is it converting people on the page? Is it having the best salespeople? The easy you know? answer is... Right, you need clients at the end of the day. But is that the answer? No, because within this system, the most important thing is data. And this is what a lot of people don't realize because when you have the data, right, you're able to do things like retargeting and bringing people back into your campaign. If you have email addresses from leads that came in but didn't close, you're able to send them to new offers, new landing pages. Hey, we just redid everything at our hotel. Come check it out, watch this video, right? And then ultimately you can drive people to become bigger clients. But what happens when they don't have this? Scott, I'll let you take this one. <laughs> Listen, this is where the OTAs are the best of the best because they've mastered every element of this. They put, they put really, really smart individuals in charge of every step of this. And the problem with hotels is they don't. They're only looking for this and they're not willing to invest in this. That's why you're relying heavily on them. Right. And, and they basically, they, they, they've been holding you hostage for a long time. Right, and especially with everything that just happened, you know, trips were canceled, hotels had no way, or destinations had no way to even reach back out to these people to say, hey, right. we know you booked with us, and we would love for you to come back when we reopen later this year, or 2021, whatever it is. They have no way to get in front of those, those customers and communicate with them. This is why direct bookings are so important for properties. Absolutely. So what happens if you don't have the system, right? And you don't have the data and probably the last couple months has been pretty hectic for you, right? You're kind of scrambling around trying to figure out what to do, how to stay in front of people. Um, at the end of the day, you know, let's think about though, what happens if everything comes back in winter, right? If we go back into another cycle where everything kind of gets in lockdown and shut down and you don't aren't prepared for that and aren't planning and preparing over the next six months, that's where I think a lot of issues will arise. Um, if you don't adapt, you know, you're just putting yourself in a risky position. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a risky position, like why open yourself up to that if you don't have to? So we know travel's coming back. We've already established that. How is it going to come back? I mean, I'll, I'll, I have an idea. <laughs> so this is what's gonna happen over the next six months, 12 months. First, your drive market is gonna become much bigger. Gas is insanely cheap. People are afraid to get on planes. Drive you know, markets are gonna double or triple. Exactly, minimum. like this is gonna be the summer of road trips everywhere, right? Absolutely. And you need to focus on the drive market before you even go into anything like domestic, right? Correct. Domestic flights. Yeah, drive market and regional drives are gonna be huge. Definitely. And then after that is where international travel will come back. Obviously there's exceptions to everything. You know, someone might need to get on a plane for right, right, business right, right, or right, whatnot, right. but right. we're talking about the general state of most people. Most people are in a state where they're afraid to get on planes right now, and we actually don't know how long that's gonna last because we don't know what's really happening with this thing, right? But we do know this is, people are itching to get out of the house. We've seen it here in Florida, right? They yeah. opened up some beaches and people were driving two, three, four hours to go to a beach because they don't have anything else to do. Correct. You know, right. and normally yeah. no one would ever do right. that. <laughs> they don't even like to drive a half hour. <laughs> yeah. Especially here. So. This is very important to realize as you're planning moving forward. If you had a big population of people that flew into your destination, how can you focus on the drive market? How can you focus on people within your community just figuring out even more things to do? Um, and I think this is something that every brand needs to consider as they're moving forward. But I also wanna talk about what happens if we have, say, two brands, brand A and brand B. All right, brand A, brand B, Brand A has been doing everything right from the beginning. Yeah, there was a little stumble in the beginning, but they've really opened up the lines of communication. They started doing live streams. They were talking about what their employees are doing, if they're furloughed or not, really showing what's going on behind the scenes and keeping their brand top of mind. B has went completely dark. They haven't done anything on the digital side, nothing on the marketing side. They haven't done anything. So here is C, which stands for customer, when they start planning trips, the obvious answer, who do you take? 
A or B? Obviously, brand A, right? Um, and if you're a brand that hasn't been focused on digital and content, and maybe you are the brand B in this situation because you haven't known what to do, you don't have the assets to be putting out there, you don't have the resources, whatever it may be, the good news is now's the time to be working on that because starting today means you're gonna be further ahead than you were if you start six months from now, right? Mm -hmm. And then again, always just consider how important the next six months would be should this we go into another state of lockdown should anything happen right if you fail to plan you're planning to fail okay so scott let's you travel a lot what would what's the number one thing that you're going to be considering when a brand is, is saying hey come join us right now it's all about safety it's all about the health measures it's all about the hygiene how are the hotels laid out what safety measures have they been putting into place and how can i find out about them Right. Like, like if the brand isn't being showing us what measures have been taking place, how are we supposed to know? Yep. The other thing is too, I mean, I look at everything from a content perspective, right? If a brand tried to give me all their old content right. and their old video assets and say, I mean, hey, can they even use the old content now? <laughs> no, because think about the changes that are happening in your the hotels, the layouts, right? Even an old restaurant, if it was empty and didn't show people, you're still going to see the tables close to each other, the chairs close to each other, right? All that stuff needs to be re-documented, rebuilt. The assets need to be put in place. You need to show servers with masks and gloves. You need to show the check-in line showing social distancing. There's so many things that, that you need to portray as a brand that if you don't, nothing else is gonna matter. It's not gonna matter how much money you're putting into ads because someone's gonna get to your, your page, your video is just gonna be all these people all together, no safety measures, and something right. to say, I don't wanna go there. And then they look at your competitor down the street and they say, oh wow, they have a video where they're showing masks and gloves and, and like. It's an easy decision. Yeah, it's an easy decision when it comes to this. So you have to think about showing people how you have responded to this. Mm -hmm. And the number one way to do that is video. Like I'm 100% biased because I have a video marketing company, but the reason video is the number one most powerful thing. Just think of this, your most powerful and, and best salesperson, right? Imagine just duplicating them a hundred times and having them being able to sell 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year in multiple locations around the world, all at the same time, while you and the rest of your sales team is actually just sleeping. That's the power of video. You can literally create the most powerful asset to get in front of people, to share your message, to connect with them. There's nothing more powerful other than face to face right now, which you can't do. <laughs> Correct. You can't do it the same way that you were before, you know? And so, even if you're good, nothing works 24 hours a day. Right. It's not, there's no comparison right. to that. And it's not just video though. You need the right video and now you need to get it in front of your target audience. You need them to see these changes. You need to let them know you care and you're, and you're working to make these changes. You need to have the right messaging behind it, right? And you need to be focused on building that database. But it's not just video, right? It's you gotta get those videos in front of the right people. You gotta make the right messaging with it. You gotta show them that you care and you're making the right changes. And then on top of it, you need to be building that database, right? The next six months, the amount of emails you could capture and yeah. bring in for people that are yeah. interested in your location, and then you could be targeting them for years. Literally, I got a call from a cruise I went on 10 years ago recently. Well, at the end of the day, you have to take the power away from the OTAs. You gotta get, you gotta get back the power. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's 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 common sense. You gotta stop shortchanging yourself. You're stepping over a dollar to pick up a penny. Okay. The pandemic has already achieved massive disruption. What all businesses need now is to be agile moving forward. I mean, you have to be. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, have you ever heard big brands mention being able to pivot, make decisions overnight? I mean, this pandemic has changed the world and it will forever. It's the great equalizer. Monster the equalizer. good thing about this pandemic, okay? And you gotta look for the silver linings because there's too much doom and gloom out there. The good thing about this, it was the great equalizer in every industry because every industry went to zero, okay? Yeah, you got a few out there, Amazon and whatnot, but 99.9% .9 of the business, zero revenue. Everybody's starting at the same start line. Right. Now's the time. Yep. I mean, what are you waiting for? Seriously. So <laughs> if you're, 
if this resonates with you first off and this makes sense and you're saying, look, I need to know how to figure out how to implement this in my business. We're actually doing free 30 minute strategy sessions. Anyone who wants to jump on, um, you know, we can do consulting, we can break down your brand, talk about just strategies, you know, no cost. Like we're just letting you know what to focus on. Um, on top of that, I mean. Yeah, just, just reach out to us and also, um, comment on this because tell us if there's specific talk bit, talk bit, bit, yeah. topics, topics. <laughs> nailed it topics that you want us to talk about in the future because we're going to be doing more of these videos right our goal like we said is to really help educate uh, let people know what they can be doing we want to get back to travel we need our clients to get back up and running so that they can be paying us and then we can be providing services to bring them you know it's a whole system that works and at the end of the day like we just want to get back out there and do our thing. Listen, the world is not getting less digital. If anything, it's going to get worse as you're moving forward. Yep. That's it, guys. We'll catch you next time. See ya. Later.